Hi everybody, it's Gemma, welcome back to Pampered Wolf. Super excited today, I've been away for a good couple of weeks, although I haven't been away, I've been in the house, but I haven't been filming for a good couple of weeks. You haven't done without me because I did a lot of pre-filming before I had some time off to spend with my family, but I feel like I've been without all of you and I've missed you all, so I am super excited to get back to filming today. And I'm also super excited because today I am going to be applying all of the products that make me feel super flawless. Super, super flawless. Now, these don't have to be my ultimate favorite products. So some of the products that I apply in this video may shock you all, but a lot of my ultimate favorites are very, very sheer in coverage, very, very skin-like, and we're not doing that today. We are gonna add a little bit of coverage, but still make the skin look beautiful and glowy and gorgeous and youthful and very, very nice. So let's crack on with it. If you are new here, hi, my name's Gemma. I upload two to three videos here on YouTube every single week. And I'm also on Instagram if you fancy checking me out over there. It's at Pampered Wolf, all lowercase, no spaces. I would really appreciate it if after this video has finished, if you've liked what you've watched, you come and join the Pampered Wolf pack by clicking on that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Let's get on with it. Okay, so we're gonna do eyes first because I don't want any fallout. And even though I get very limited fallout with this palette, in fact, I hardly ever get any fallout whatsoever. This is just the way around that I'm comfortable doing it. And then I can clear up with everything else like foundation and concealer. So I'm gonna use my Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in the shade Original. Why is this not focusing? There we go. See, it's had a little rest. Needs to wake up a little bit. So. I'm just gonna apply some of this to both of my eyelids and then blend this all the way up to the brow. Okay, so we're gonna go into the Natasha Denona Glam Palette, which you know I absolutely adore. There are some great shades in here. We're not gonna dip into any of the sparkly shades today, so it's not gonna be ultra, ultra glittery glam. I am going to be using all of the more transition crease shades. So primarily this shade, I'm also gonna be using this shade and possibly a little bit of this shade as well. And maybe, maybe I'll use a little bit of this one. I'm not quite sure how glam this is gonna end up looking. I haven't really planned this out. We're just, you know, we're gonna wing it. See how it turns out. Wish me luck. So, I'm gonna go straight into this shade here, which is the crease shade. Make sure I don't have too much on my brush, and I'm just gonna apply that right at the base. And a little bit more and just pat that on as well a little bit further up. Then I'm going to take a fluffy brush. This one is my Refa 16 brush. And I'm just going to feather that out. And just see what we can do with that just to blend it a little bit. So once I've done that on both sides, I'm gonna take my Charlotte Tilbury Exaggerize Liner Duo and take the black side and I'm just literally pushing it into my lashes on the outer edge. So it doesn't have to be super, super neat. Just make sure it's close to the lash line as physically possible, which is why I like to go from underneath the lashes and push up. And then we're gonna go back into the Glam Palette with a really small brush. This is my Refer 03 brush. And I'm gonna go into this shade here, which is the darker, smokier shade. And I'm just gonna go on the top of that and then blend to the edges. And just smoke that out a little bit more. Applying an eyeshadow to the top of your liner will also help set that liner in place. So if you have quite oily eyelids, if you really struggle to hold your eyeliner in place throughout the day, then that's a really good tip for you. Apply an eyeshadow in the same shade 
over the top to really lock that in place. It does exactly the same job as when you've got a foundation on and you add powder to the top to set it in place. This is just setting the liner in place and just helping it to look a little bit smokier. Okay, then I'm gonna take a smaller brush, go in with exactly the same shade. This is my Refer 13 brush. I am holding everything upside down today. I'm sorry. You'll have to take my word for it. It definitely is the Refer 13 brush, not the 31. Then I'm just gonna add a little bit of a flick on this outer edge just to help lift the eye up over here. Just shut my eye a little bit. And then right at the end, I'm gonna go into the palest transition shade, which is actually called Transition, this one here. And I'm gonna go all the way around the edge and just buff everything together. And for that, I'm gonna use a fluffy brush from Morphe. This is the E23 brush. So I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of that and just go all the way round the edge using small circular movements just to buff everything together. Okay, so let's move on to skin. And this is the part of this video that I'm most excited for because if you've noticed, my skin is looking a little bit of a mess at this moment in time and it's completely my fault. I have nobody else to blame but myself. I bought a Peloton Tread. It's the best thing I've ever invested in. I absolutely love it and I go on it every single day, but I was so excited when it arrived that I wanted to go on it immediately. And I'd done some skincare first thing that morning and applied a really, really occlusive cream to my skin. And I didn't remove that before I started doing my workout. I mean, skincare 101, <laughs> you do not do a workout in a really, really heavy product like that because I mean, this is what happens. It's my fault. I knew what I was doing and uh, I ignored my own advice, so shame on me. <laughs> but we're now suffering the consequences. I mean, it, it'll be gone in a couple of days, but hey, <laughs> gotta suffer with it at this moment in time. So I'm gonna use a primer and I don't usually use primers. This is the Forever Skin Veil. It's, it's by Dior and it's just divine. This just so, so beautiful. It's got an SPF of 20 in there. Obviously you're not getting an SPF of 20 in this product because you're not applying enough, but uh, I really like it. It's super hydrating and yeah, it's just really, really nice. As you can see, it has a slight tint to it, but I mean, practically nothing. Really, really practically nothing. This does have a scent. So, um, if you don't like products with a scent, I mean, you're not gonna like anything Dior because practically everything Dior has a scent, but I really, really like this. And I very rarely see a difference when I apply a primer to actually when I don't use a primer. And my skin just feels so nice with this. Really, really nice. And it just creates a lovely, lovely canvas for the rest of my products. Just adds a really lovely, hydrating, glowy look to the skin. I've probably applied a little bit too much, I'm not gonna lie, but you know, I really like it. So there we go. So I'm just gonna wait for that to sink in and then we're gonna go in with foundation. And even though I'm after a flawless look today, I'm going for another Dior product. This is the Dior Skin Glow. And uh, I mean, it's my second favorite foundation of all time. This is the one that I go to when I want a really natural look, but I'm after coverage and flawless, flawless coverage. So it's definitely not matte. If you're after a matte coverage, the Forever Normal Matte is absolutely excellent, but um, yeah. This is lovely, really, really lovely. So I'm actually gonna apply this with a brush straight away on the areas that I need a little bit more coverage and then go over the areas that I just want to sheer out a little bit 
with a sponge just to smooth everything off. I mean, oh, look at that. Blemishes be gone. Oh yes. Now what I love about this foundation is that it will give a really decent amount of coverage. This isn't a full coverage foundation though. You can build it up to full coverage, but I prefer it as a medium coverage. But like I said, most of the products that I absolutely love tend to be more sheer to light coverage rather than that medium coverage. So this is one of those products that will give me a little bit more. So I'm going to take my sponge and just pad that over just to smooth everything out if I feel like I need it. To be honest, I don't feel like I need it, but I do like to take a little bit of excess off. So let's cover up my dark circles. Firstly, I'm going to go in with the Revolution Conceal and Correct in the shade Peach. This is absolutely fantastic. A lot of people have contacted me and said that they don't like this because it creases like mad. You literally need the tiniest amount and then remove any excess. So I'm just going to add two dots underneath. Take a concealer brush. This is my Zoeva 142 and I'm literally just applying it where I need it. I am not going all the way underneath my eyes. Just applying over the darkest areas and padding that in place. Look at the difference already in just applying it where I need it. So let's move on to concealer. I'm going to be using my favourite concealer from Pat McGrath Labs. This is the best concealer hands down I have ever had on my skin. <laughs> Honestly, it's just absolutely amazing. It just makes me feel completely flawless because it just airbrushes everything away. So the shade that I'm going to use today is L2. This one is slightly fairer than my natural skin tone to add that brightening effect. If you're my skin shade twin and you're wanting something closer to your natural skin tone, then uh, I would go for either L4 or L5. L4 has that slightly peachy undertone to it, so it may help cover up any dark circles if you feel you need the help with that and you don't want to add a colour corrector. That's probably the one that I'd go for but I really love L5. L5 is more neutral. I'm going to go in with L2 today though and I'm just putting a couple of dots there and a couple of dots at the outer edge. Once again going in with my concealer brush and paying most attention to the areas that I need that coverage. Now you do have to work quite quickly with this, especially if you have dry under eyes. So I'm just going to pop this where I want it. Then I'm going to go in with a damp sponge and blend the rest out. Whilst I'm waiting for that to dry down, I am going to do my brows. You all know what brow product I'm going to use. This is the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Ash Brown. Absolutely love it. Once both brows are filled in, I'm going to take my um, Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter and uh, apply this to my brows. I love this. I haven't found anything that rivals this so far. The applicator is absolutely amazing. The combs on the applicator allow for a really precise application whether you want a lot of product on your brows, whether you want a small amount of product on your brows, you can really, really define the brows with the combs on here. It's not like a mascara wand that just lets the product go anywhere. And it's also absolutely amazing with the most amazing hold ever. Okay, so once I've done my brows, I'm going to go back under my eyes to finish off my concealer. And now that's dried down, I'm going to go straight into my Pat McGrath Labs 
blurring powder this is the skin fetish sublime perfection blurring under eye powder i'm gonna go straight back in with my damp blending sponge and just press that underneath my eye where i need to set that in place it's just unbelievable this and it just blurs everything out you can use this in other areas of the face to set those areas in place and I have often done that especially between my brows but uh, primarily I use this underneath my eyes so once my under eyes are set, we're gonna set the rest of the face and then we're gonna finish off the eye look. To set the face, I am gonna be using my Dior Forever Cushion Powder. This is brand new from Dior. I'm really, really liking it so far. It comes with a little powder puff. I personally don't use the powder puff. If I was out and about, which I'm not out and about at the moment, I would use this and it's absolutely fine just to press into this it's got a little mesh on there. You press into the mesh so that you don't get too much powder. Now this may not be great for some people because if you're wanting a lot of powder on your brush, it's slightly difficult with this, with it having the mesh. I would say remove the mesh if that's what you're wanting to do. But as an out and about powder, just to touch up your foundation, this is absolutely fantastic. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit in between my brows. Let me show you this on an actual brush. So if I'm using a brush, I just pat into this with the brush. And just pat this where I want it, which is basically over my pores to blur out my pores and on my chin where I always lose foundation regardless of what foundation it is generally by the end of the day there's no foundation left on my chin unless I set it in place you can definitely achieve a flawless look with more affordable products I am being a little bit you know over the top in this video I am aware of that I'm just using a lot of my favorite stuff if you want me to do a video how to achieve a flawless look with affordable products do let me know in the comment section if I hadn't have used my Dior powder I would have definitely gone into my Fenty Beauty Pro filter powder foundation because although this would add a little bit of extra coverage which I don't particularly need this will definitely airbrush my pores mattify in the areas that I need it so I would only apply this in the areas that I need it but it's a great great product to have especially in your handbag when it's one of those emergency situations where you just need to touch up in a hurry this is definitely a great product to do it with but like I said if you want me to do a more affordable version of this video do let me know in the comment section and I will happily do that for you so I already feel pretty flawless, but there are a few more steps to go. So I want to finish my eye look before I go on to the rest of the face, like bronzer and blush, and then move on to lips. I am firstly going to go back into my uh, Charlotte Tilbury Exagerize ex 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 Liner Duo. Wow, that was tough. So I'm going to go back into the black side, and once again push that right up right underneath the natural lashes and then I'm actually going to do a bit of tight lining as well I'm also going to do the upper waterline as well so once that's done, we're going to soften this out, make it look far more smoky rather than quite harsh like it is at the moment. I'm going to go into this transition shade first and I'm going to go into this portion in closer to the inner corner and to the center of the pupil. Then I'm going to take this crease color here which is the first shade that we use that we've got all over the lid and pop that all the way to the outer corner from the center of the pupil. 
And then just to finish off the eye look, I'm gonna add a little bit of this shade here, which is in a corner. And I know I said I wasn't gonna add any sparkle, but I just feel like we need to finish off this inner corner just like that. <laughs> just a tiny amount just lifts it. So we're gonna put this eye look to bed with a lick of mascara. I have been umming and ahhing which mascara I want to use in this video. Which mascara makes me feel flawless? I just don't know. So I'm gonna pick my favorite at this moment in time, regardless of whether it's a luxury mascara, whether it's an affordable mascara, I'm just gonna pick my favorite. And ever since I did my full face of new drugstore, I have been reaching for this mascara. So this is the Maybelline Last Sensational Sky High Mascara. And as you can see, I still haven't removed all of the sticky. I did appreciate all of your tips though. I will be putting some of those to use. So I'm just going to go in with a little bit of this. I really like this mascara, but I know mascara is so subjective depending on the activities that you're doing in the day, whether it's going to be hot, whether you've got oily upper lids, whether it's humid, where you are, I mean, it really does depend on a lot of factors. So I really, really like it though. I think it's really nice. So that's the eyes completed. Let's add a little bit of definition to the face. I am gonna be using my Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. Really, really love this. Again, I'm gonna be taking my powder brush, which is the RT400 just so that I don't go overboard with the bronzer. And I'm just gonna dab that on my skin. Now, if you haven't seen my best brushes video, I will link it up here for you. It's definitely worth a watch. All my favorite brushes in there that will suit every single budget. So there will be an option for you if you are looking to invest in any brushes. I love my brushes, absolutely adore my brushes. I'm gonna take a little bit under my cheekbone and just blend that up just to add a little bit of definition. Then I'm gonna add a little bit to the tip of my chin and then just bronze my neck up a little bit. Naturally, my neck is so much fairer than my face. I mean, I always look like I've got a floating head when I've got no makeup on whatsoever. So I'm gonna add a little bit of glow back to my cheeks and this may shock quite a few of you, but I'm gonna use more of a liquid blush rather than one of my favorites like the Hourglass Ambient Lighting blushes or my new favorite Chanel blush, which is just divine, absolutely divine. But I just feel like when I've got quite a high coverage foundation on, it just lifts it a little bit if I add a little bit of glow. So. This is from Iconic London and it's one of their sheer blushes. This is in the shade Cheeky Coral. I love it. I've used it in my videos before. I'm just gonna apply a little bit to the back of my hand and then once again, take the same damp blending sponge that I used for my foundation, my concealer, and just apply a little bit of that where I want it. This is so beautiful. I mean, there are no words to express how beautiful this blush is. And because it's quite sheer, it doesn't add even more coverage on top of the coverage that we've already got. And that's where I think a lot of people make mistakes. They go overboard on the foundation and they have coverage, 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 and then they select other products to apply on top that's also coverage, 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 which looks absolutely stunning at first, but by the end of the day, starts to look a little patchy, a little cakey in areas. So because I've gone for coverage, with the foundation, I'm just trying to keep everything else quite light. 
So I'm gonna finish off this look with some lips. I'm gonna go straight in with my MAC lip pencil in the shade Boldly Bare. This is so beautiful. It matches pretty much my natural lip color, which is great for me. I always find using a lip liner you can get a much crisper look to the lip, which is adding to that flawless look. So I always like to use a lip pencil when I'm going for something that needs to look really finished and clean and crisp. And finally, I'm gonna add a lip color. Now this one, I have to add in this. Beatrice was actually having a go at me the other day for not using this lip color in any of my videos. I've worn it in my videos before, but I've never actually applied it in my videos. And uh, this is from Natasha Denona, and um, it's called Beatrice. It's one of her I Need a Nude lipsticks, and this is in 31NP named Beatrice. So here you go, Beatrice. This is for you. So just to add a little bit of pinky to that very neutral brownie shade, I'm just going to add a little bit of Sava just to pink it up a bit. Really, really pretty. Love it. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed me playing around with all of these absolutely fantastic products. Like I said, if you want me to do a more affordable version of this video, do let me know in the comment section. I will be happy to do that because this is definitely achievable with more affordable products. These are just some of my favorite products to use to create a flawless look. And although this is far more coverage than I would usually go for, and it's a little bit more dramatic than I'd usually go for, for. I really like it. Let me know what you think and hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.